The Hitway BK29M is a versatile electric bike designed for both daily commutes and outdoor adventures. Its powerful motor, long-lasting battery, and sturdy tires make it suitable for various terrains. With multiple riding modes, adjustable gear, and safety features like disc brakes and a bright headlight, the BK29M offers a comfortable and enjoyable riding experience. Whether you're exploring the city or venturing off-road, this bike is a reliable and convenient choice. Overall, this bike looks fantastic. Looks like a nice off-road dirt bike, and it also looks like a motorcycle given this huge big seat. Very, very nice. Now, the thing is, I guess it technically is a motorcycle because it does have an electric motor. It is a cycle motorcycle, right? Now, the thing is, the assembly process of putting this together was a lot more difficult and much more of a process than it actually needed to be because I've assembled a bunch of electric bikes in my day and this one was somehow the hardest one to do out of all of them because it took me over two hours to get this thing assembled. The first thing that was weird is it came with a bag of unorganized parts and bolts and nuts and screws and you had to just figure out what they were based on the instruction manual, which although was pretty detailed the pictures were kind of hard to make out what you're supposed to do because everything is black and blended in together in the photos so they could definitely do a better job with that it also came with a multi-tool which at first seemed like a great idea because all the tools were together until you start trying to use it and the whole brick of tools is in the way while you're trying to use one tool and then to top it off when you're trying to screw in a screw into a nut and you don't have a hex wrench to hold the other side to keep it in place while you're trying to spin that screw everything's just free spinning and you can't use your finger because it's not going in smooth very weird. I had to literally go find a hex wrench from another bike that I assembled in order to finish putting this one together. Who knew? And finally, some of the things I did have to assemble were just overly complicated and kind of for no reason. For example, if we come take a look at these reflectors on the tires, they actually needed to be manually installed and they involved like three or four pieces to put together. And I feel like they look kind of stupid. They could have easily just had reflectors already on here, made them look better and took away some time that was needed during the assembly process. Now that being said, like I said, the bike does look fantastic and it does feel great. If we take a look over here, we have a bunch of cool features. First things first over here on the left handlebar, nice and grippiness right here, very nice. Over here we also do have controls plus and minus to control things on the screen as well as a power button. Now if we power on the bike, we do light up this nice display here that does look fantastic gives you all the information you need such as the speed what mode you're in as far as pedal assisting goes the odometer and you can even cycle through different things change the speed right there as well as go through the trip counter the voltage meter the current ride as well as the current time that it's been powered on over here on the right side we do have the seven speed shimano transmission so you can go up and down gears depending on your terrain and we also do have the throttle right here which you turn and it'll start picking up speed with the electric motor. Of course, we do have the right and the left brake levers and one of them was facing down, one was facing forward. I'm not sure if this is a standard thing or not, but I left it how it is, although you can loosen it up and change it to your liking if you so choose. Of course, we do have these big 20 inch tires that are definitely fat. And as you can see, they are great for pretty much any terrain given their size. One thing else, these did come pretty much deflated, but it did include a pump to fill them up. So not too big of an issue. And as you can see, like I said, I to install that reflector and just those pieces they just it just doesn't look as nice as literally every other bike tire i've ever seen in my entire life then of course we do have this big old headlight here which actually does project pretty far and it also does have a ring light here even when the headlight is turned off so it actually looks very cool now the thing is installing this we had this piece which is the light itself we had this bar on the side as well as this little bar right here to connect everything together and i feel like it was overly complicated especially because the picture was hard to make out during the installation process now, as you can see it's actually still loose on here but if I try to put it in the other groove it was too tight to wrap around here and it was just another hassle that didn't need to be there now as far as the pedals these were manually installed as well but it was also not an easy process you simply screw them in counterclockwise or clockwise depending on the side this one I was able to get in all the way with the tool from the hex wrench this one as you can see it's still threaded out it's only in here halfway now it is pretty much secure so I should be having no problem with it but I am a bit worried that it could fall off because it's not in there all the way and there's no way I was able to force it in there. I was trying so hard with everything I had and this is all I could do. Now while we're over here, the installation process was also complicated because the chain, instead of being set up like it is right now, it was actually hanging off the back and all tangled up, which was very weird the first time I've seen that. It took me about 20 minutes finagling with it in order to get it to actually straighten out, got it installed here, but still, 
the chain is pretty loose. It doesn't have as much tension as it should. And I feel like when you're riding it, you can definitely hear it falling off the tracks and going back on and catching itself. So seems like something is up there. Then of course, right here, we do have the removable large battery, which has a manual power on switch and a little button here. So you can see the actual charge state of the battery. And now this battery is able to get you between 35 and 50 miles for a single charge, depending on what mode of pedal assist mode you happen to do. And also you can definitely do unlimited if you're just pedaling it manually yourself. Right here on the back, we actually do have some suspension coils here that actually have 750 pounds per inch. And when you sit on it, you can actually feel it adjusting to your weight. We also do have shocks on the front as well to give you a nice ride in any terrain. Over on the back, we also do have a reflector that doubles and triples as a tail light as well as a brake light when you pull the brake lever. Now, as far as other annoyances about this bike is this kickstand. It's big, beefy, and very sturdy. It looks great, look at this. I can kick it, it's very solid. But the thing is, if I have the bike just vertical like normal, if I go to use it, it likes to grind on the floor in order to do it. So in order to actually use this thing, because the floor is in the way for some reason, you have to actually tilt the bike forward, hold it because the weight's trying to pull it down to the ground and then use it and then bring it back up. And then as you see, when it's standing, it's not really leaning that much to the left because of the vertical setup of the kickstand. It looks like it's more vertical than ever for the bike, as far as other bikes I've seen. So like I said, when you try to use this, you have to tilt it like this and then do that. Otherwise, it grinds on the ground and that's a bad look. So now with that being said, let's get on this bike. Okay, feels good. As you can see, hopefully it actually is flexing with my weight as I sit on it. And now let's take it for a ride and see how well it does. As you can see, the, <laughs> the pedal fell off like I said. That's actually crazy. I told you it wasn't on there. It wouldn't let me get it in there all the way. Good thing I wasn't riding at top speed, am I right? Let's actually see if I can get this back on. So, as you can see, it shows you which way to go, the arrow. So we put it in here, twist it, it's going, it stops. I didn't bring the hex wrench with me, but I was using it at home and I couldn't get it to go further than that. So I'll just be very careful. So now, <laughs> let's go for a ride. Hopefully I won't be pedaling that much. <laughs> Okay, the good news is I'm mainly going to be using this as an electric bike where you don't need the pedals. So <laughs> let's just do that, okay? Oh, man. I thought it was in there pretty tight since I couldn't move it. I don't know. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just run with it. All right, let's, let's go. So I guess I'll turn on pedal assist mode here. And that way I don't need the pedals. See? Easy. All right, so here we go, hitting the road on pedal assist mode one without a pedal, so that's cool. As you can see, I maxed out at 9.3 miles per hour, which is a pretty good speed, although, you know, not that fast, but if you're just trying to cruise around, maybe you're a beginner, this is definitely perfect. Feel the wind in your face and get where you're going without using your feet whatsoever. As you can see, very easy to control this thing, a very smooth ride. Now, if I actually increase the speed, it's bringing us up to pedal assist mode two, which is about 15 and a half miles per hour, which is actually a very good speed. I know a lot of bikes and electric scooters are actually limited to 15 miles per hour. So this is actually where you would be when it comes to one of those. Now, where things get interesting, the third mode, if I press that, bam, instantly start picking up speed and we're going 20 miles an hour. Woo! 19.8 to be exact, but this is very fast. We'll definitely get you where you're trying to go. We can take this turn here, slow down a bit. Very nice, all right. Look at that, very good. Working wonders here. That's crazy, the shocks are doing very good at absorbing any of the impacts I'm getting from the ground that I'm on. Because remember, we're in a construction zone right now and it's not the best road. There's definitely debris and dust everywhere. Speaking of dust. <laughs> A very smooth ride. It's actually really impressive. It's picking up speed very well, maintaining speed. Let's come around this turn here. Whee! <laughs> very nice. The motor is very responsive, very smooth. Riding off into the sunset. Now, of course, if you were pedaling, you'd get unlimited miles as long as you could pedal because you're using your own energy, which is very cool in a backup if your battery happens to die. 
Now the thing was, like I said, when I was pedaling earlier, testing this thing out a bit, the, the chain just felt really loose and it just kept making sounds like it was falling off the track and also re-catching itself as I'm riding, which was pretty annoying and I feel like it could actually fall off because of it being so loose. But, you know, hopefully there's some way to fix that. It shouldn't be like that out of the box, so that's all I'm saying. But, remember, I'm using this as a motorcycle and it is doing a fantastic job at that. Yeah, bumps in the road are no problem. Look at that, I look fantastic, right? Let me actually turn on the headlight. Got the headlight turned on, looking great. I like that ring light though, that ring light looks fantastic. Coming around that turn, coming through some dirt. Look at that, no problem. Do a quick 360 U-turn right here. Very nice. Then I could easily turn the headlight back off. Picking up speed quickly, look at that, it just picks up speed. Coming to a slow stop, easy peasy. And here we go, look at that. Very smooth and just responsive. Now one thing I did notice that's missing from this bike is a bell, and I love the bell. I can't believe there's no bell here. I like to just ring that thing when I'm coming up on people. There should be like some kind of blow horn or something. As you can see, I'm going through some pretty soft sand and dirt right now. It's actually getting great traction, riding very nicely. Very good actually, very impressive. Look at that, picking up speed. Woo! This definitely feels like a motorcycle. I mean, like I said, it is a motorcycle, but it definitely feels like one too. Right, coming on back slow stop Ooh, very nice so overall the hip bike bk29 this is a, a very solid e-bike it looks fantastic love the design of this thing just, just look at it it looks like it means business and it definitely does the motor is very powerful can get you up to 20 miles per hour does have cruise control all that and these big beefy tires along with the shocks and everything combined together very pleasant and smooth riding experience no matter what the terrain is now like i said the assembly process was a bit involved and some things could have definitely been cut out if they were just assembled in the factory to begin with but it is what it is now i'm just concerned about that pedal falling off but obviously you could probably somehow get that on there but i was trying to force it and force it and force it and it wouldn't go this is the first time i've had pedals that didn't go on smoothly by hand so that's interesting i'm not sure what's up with that but all in all, very nice. Like I said, the headlight looks fantastic. You can simply turn it on. Look at that, very bright. You can actually angle it how you need it. Up, down, like straight down, whatever you want. Literally anywhere. That's very nice, 180 degree rotation. And it also has that amazing ring light that I like so much, whether the light's on or off. That just looks fantastic, very cool. But like I said, the one annoyance that is gonna be with you daily is the kickstand because you have to use that literally every time you ride this thing twice to take it off and put it back on. So, mm -hmm. look at that. So you have to go like this. Okay, you don't have to go that far, but you still have to bend it over this way, hold it while trying to pull you down to the ground, do it, and then put it up, just like that. But overall, very solid bike that does a great job at being an electric e-bike with big tires. And I'm gonna go right off into the sunset. See you later.